What's up guys, Zinigami here, and let's go over the Spiral Abyss in Genshin Impact. If you have no idea what the Spiral Abyss is, at Adventure Rank 20, you can go over to this Musk Reef over here, which to get here, there's actually a special thing over here on the Cape Oath that brings you here. Don't swim here, don't waste your time. Um, get over here and adventure rank 20 this will be available to you the spiral abyss which in the events tab if you go here you would have this here I already got my Shang Ling so it's not there anymore but it says if you beat spiral abyss stage 3 3 then you will get a copy of her and she is a very nice free play character that a lot of players really really enjoy and will be able to carry you for quite some time so note that in the spiral abyss the first eight stages have rewards that do not reset and once you claim any of the rewards here and the first time clear rewards on the rewards preview here, then you do not get any additional rewards for doing it more times. After stage eight, stages nine through 12 reset every first and 16th of the month. And with that reset on the first and 16th, they also have new buffs or events that are happening, the blessing of the abyssal moon. This changes every spiral abyss moon period so for the one that i'm recording in right now there's an aura that shows up randomly that if your character has a shield increases their strength and also if our character's stamina is above 50 percent then we'll be we'll get a little shock wave that happens once every 10 seconds these effects are mostly small they're not that major so you can more or less annoy ignore them the bigger effects is that on every single floor, and these do not reset, these are always the same on every single floor for every single player, is a disorder. And for floor three that we're talking about here, increases swirl reaction damage by three times, and it's AoE by 100%. Animal damage dealt by all party members increased by 75%. So your swirling, if you have an animal character, is going to do a lot more damage and is going to have a much bigger splash. So the characters I recommend, I'm actually using uh, a bunch of characters with bad weapons on them. So here my main character has 300 attack. I have a lot of health because I don't want to swap off all of my artifacts, but I have 300 attack here on my main character. I'm also going to be using Lisa with 400 attack, Kaya with 200 attack, and Amber with 200 attack. So I'm trying to make my characters similar to a team that you might have at Adventure Rank 20-ish. Um, asking around seems that most people have characters with about 400 attack or more. So you should be able to have a team that's better than mine by now. What I do recommend for this stage especially is if you have a Venti, Venti will make stage 2 so much easier. But let's assume that you don't and use a team that looks like this. The big thing is you would really like to have an archer somewhere on your team so that way you can hit, hit the weak point of the runic golem on stage three. So we're going to use this team here. Everyone's got kind of low attack. An animo character is very nice. Your main character is going to start off as your animo character so you can use him or her on stage two as we go through this. These buffs here will be three random buffs that are given to you that you can pick one of. Blue buffs in general are going to be better to select on the first two floors since these will happen for all three chambers. So this floor three, if we pick one of these blue buffs, it'll be active permanently for the rest of the run. If we pick the brown buff here, it'll only work on this one chamber. So if you have a chamber that you're having a hard time with brown buffs are generally a little bit stronger than a blue buffs who just give a smaller buff but last multiple different floors so we're going to take a blue buff elemental mastery which basically increases the damage of any of our elemental reactions if you're not familiar with that i have an entire video explaining elemental reactions that you guys can check out and you can preview what characters are going to be on a stage, but the first thing we're gonna want to do to make things a little bit easier is kind of just throw Amber's Battle Bunny over here, and uh, just you can charge attack, charge attack. There we go. Oh, Amber, you didn't help me out. Or you can knock back. Come on, charge attack. There we go. You can knock characters right off the cliff. This is something that doesn't happen on too many stages, but Spiral This Three does let us do this where we can just straight up knock characters off, like so. 
So pretty useful if you fight them by cliffs. And on here and on the... Only really on 3-1 will these guys spawn right next to the edge. And getting a charge headshot or running over to them with our main character will let us knock them right off and save a lot of time actually fighting them if you have a weaker team. So note that when you're swirling damage, swirl does not uh, really deal damage to slimes since slimes, whenever they get swirled, are going to deal their same type of damage all around them. So you're not going to do much damage with swirls here, but whenever you do use an ability or swirl, you are going to get all those little energy orbs, which are useful for refilling your character's ultimates. I don't know why I'm using ice powers on them. I should just use ultimates. And so for the rest of this, just kind of fight them over towards the edge. If someone is near the edge, then take a kill. You can always burn their shields to make that stage a little bit easier. And if at all possible, try to get those swirls with the main characters because that does a lot of damage. And here with our slimes, this is when we really are uh, want to group them up and immediately use animal main characters, ultimate ability. Knocks them all up. They're going to trigger swirls amongst each other a whole bunch of times and they're almost all dead. One slime left. Pretty easy. One ultimate for the group. Bring people over the edge, knock them off. For floor two, floor two is by far the most annoying floor on chamber three. Or chamber two is the most annoying floor on chamber on floor three. This is going to be so confusing. This one sucks because you have a bunch of humans and humans are the worst. If the buffs are the same here, then I'm going to take offensive stats. I'm basically always going to prefer offensive stats in the Spiral Abyss because of how many Spiral Abyss stages really want you to beat things as fast as possible. And the reason this stage is the worst is because humans on this stage want to just use range attacks and they're going to sit very far away from each other and just kind of throw all those range attacks at you and be incredibly annoying. So one thing you can do is I'm going to like back up far away since they do have a maximum range and that will start grouping them up like that. And once I start grouping them up, then I can apply buffs to them and the swirl with the larger damage. Oh, I didn't get the swirl. With the larger damage on the swirl, make sure we apply something first and then swirl it and it does a lot more damage. So in order to help group up your humans, back up so that way they're forced to group up together to get closer to you. And then once again, try to get the swirls. Also, don't forget, big ultimate here, drags them around, helps group them up. Again, very good. Just so annoying on this stage to have everyone dragged as fine. Everyone's super far away from each other. Uh, with the way that this stage is set up and all the enemies are on this stage. So, hate this stage. One of my least favorite stages in the entire Spiral Abyss, even including all the later ones that aren't as bad because you can actually get them to group up. But most of the time, focusing on swirling. Swirl, 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 get elements on, swirl them, it does a lot of damage. Even whenever you're low on gear and low on uh, attack. Note that swirling and elemental reactions in general scale with your character's levels and elemental mastery. So if you don't have the invoker set, no, instructor set, highly recommend getting some pieces of the instructor set. It's a very good set that increases your entire team's elemental mastery by 120 every time you trigger an elemental reaction, which is very easy to do with a caster. And let's get that and ult. And for swirls, the damage that a swirl deals is going to be the same amount no matter what element gets swirled. So if it's an electric swirl, an ice swirl, a fire swirl, it doesn't matter. It still deals the same amount of damage just of a different element. So if an enemy in particular isn't immune to one type of damage, it doesn't matter if I do a fire tornado, an ice tornado, whatever tornado, as long as uh, effect is on a character when you ult for the animal main character you're gonna bring that damage along and this is the last floor floor three three beat this and you're gonna get your shang ling i'm gonna take defense down and attack up and we're gonna get a mita curl and a runic guard so the first thing we're gonna do is immediately run over here 
drop my Lisa ult on him and drop my Amber ult on them as well. And then back up and shoot him in the eye. Uh, just once because the Miter Curl moved him on me. And we're gonna shoot him in the eye again. Leave me alone, Miter Curl. Charge attack on the eye. Charge attack on the eye. Come on. We'll just keep doing this until we get it. Should be. There is a cooldown for how long you can, how often you can stun a dude. There we go. And whenever you knock down a runic guard, they take much more damage than whenever they're standing up. And you really can just sit behind him. And you will be able to kill the Mita Curl by swirling the element that you're putting on the guard. So no need to do any damage to the Mita Curl here at all. Just your damage that you're dealing to the runic guard will kill the Mita Curl on accident. And we're gonna back up. And just keep shooting it until we get this done. And that's that's the entire strategy. That's the entire plan. One shot, two shots. Uh, get some fire on you. Kill you. Can we ult? We'll, we'll ult. Why not? It's not going to do much damage since it's going to fly right through. Oh my wa mo shin deru. There you go, guys. That's Spiral Abyss stages or floors. Spiral Abyss floor three, chambers one through three. I don't know why this is so difficult for me to say. Get your Shangling, come back here later with higher level characters in order to get the three stars. Just note that in order to move on to the next floor of any Spiral Abyss stage, you must get at least three of the nine stars. It doesn't matter if you got three stars on floor on chamber one, zero on chamber two, three on chamber three, as long as in total amongst your three different chambers, you get a total of six stars. You can move on to the next floor. I've been Zinigami guys. I'm going to make more guides for the Spiral Abyss floors, especially stages five, six, seven, eight. So you can hopefully finish those up before the battle pass ends. So you can get your battle pass completion points for Spiral Abyss challenge eight, three. I've been Zinigami. Thank you so much for watching and y'all stay beautiful.